Well, let's hook up some gas. I'm McMaster, and we're gonna go over a full MIG setup. First off, you're obviously gonna need a MIG welder, and there are a lot of manufacturers out there that kind of make it a little confusing because lots of them call their flux core welder a gasless MIG. Those welders do not do MIG welding, so just keep that in mind if you're out on the market for a new one. If you've inherited one or if you just bought one off some classified ads and you're wondering if it has MIG capabilities, here are a couple things you can look for that would tell you if it is or not. Is there a gas inlet connection? Can you switch the polarity of your leads? And that's because when you're flux core welding, your electrode needs to be negative versus when you're MIG welding, it needs to be positive. When you pull the trigger, can you hear the solenoid? When activated, it makes a little clicking sound like this. Almost every MIG welder has something written on the panels telling you how it should be hooked up for MIG or for flux core. So if it doesn't say anything about that or doesn't give you a diagram, then it's probably just a flux core welder. Flux core wire and MIG wire. Well, flux core is kind of what it says. There's a flux in the core of the wire or it's an inner shield wire. Uh, regardless of what welding process you're doing, you have to protect your weld. So flux core, it's the flux that protects it. MIG, it's the gas that protects it. The flux core always has kind of the dull gunmetal look to it. The MIG or solid wire has that copper coating over it. So it's the nice shiny copper looking one. I'm not going to put this up on the table and that's just because it is a compressed gas and so you don't want it falling off anything. That's usually why the carts, they have chains to go around it just because if the valve on that breaks then... Four, cross your fingers, three, two, one. You couldn't ask for a more convincing result. So let's call this myth totally and spectacularly confirmed. There are two main types, there are many others, but there are two very common types of MIG welding gas, and that is straight CO2 or a C25 mix, which is 75% argon, 25% CO2. So you might be wondering, what size should I pick up or what size should I start with? And I'd say that probably all depends on your budget. There are a whole bunch of different sizes. I don't like the really small, the 20, 40 cubic foot sizes. And since I'm in my garage, I, I don't really need those, you know, 300 plus cubic foot welding bottles. It's for me, if I'm going with CO2, I really like the 20 pound bottles. And if it's a mixed gas, I, I like the 80 cubic foot. Um, that seems like it's kind of the perfect size for me. If you're getting straight CO2, they come in an aluminum tank and they are done by weight. Why the difference? Well, the mixed gases and the argon, they pressurize those tanks up to 2000 PSI versus the CO2 only gets up to about 500 to I think six, 700. Um, either way, a lot lower PSI. Where to actually get some welding gas? Well, uh, the easiest thing to do is to Google welding gas near me and the map will pop up. You know, for example, I've got some air gas, Praxar, Humphreys. Call them up, tell them what you're looking for, tell them you're new and they'll usually help you out and kind of give you an idea of what bottles, sizes they have in stock that would fit your needs. I honestly could do an entire dedicated video to gas bottles. Now, if you're interested in that and want to know the fine details, well, leave a comment. And if there's enough, well, we'll do a video for it. If you've done any flux core welding, then the setup is actually very similar. Most newer welders come with this extra spool. It's for a 10 pound spool of wire. Um, right now, I'm just going to be hooking it up with a little two pound spool. There are two types of rollers. There's a knurled wheel or a V-type groove. The knurled is for flux core and the V is for solid core. Uh, these ones actually have the size listed and then the K for knurled and a V for V-groove. Crucial step right here. When you pull the wire out, do not let go of it. And that's just because it will unravel like a bird's nest and you'll lose a half your spool of wire. The other thing to note, most of these have little kinks in it right here, so you're gonna wanna snip that off. Don't let go of the wire until it is all the way fed through. 
Whether this is really necessary or not, um, usually I take off the nozzle and the contact tip just to kind of help the wire feed through a little easier. If you were flux core welding previously, you may have been using a flux core nozzle. This will not work with MIG welding. You need a nozzle like this, and it's because these direct that gas into the weld. Check your polarity, as I mentioned before. So this one talks about being either DCEP or DCEN. What that means is direct current, because this is an inverter machine, but you don't care about that. All you care about is that it's whether EP, which is electrode, this guy, your electrode, whether this is positive or negative. All of these little terminals have a positive and negative sign. We're doing MIG, so this guy is positive. The recent MIG welders that I've picked up all come with a regulator. There's lots of different styles, whether it has, you know, a T-type uh, knob or, you know, just a knob like this. Some of them are those torpedo glass types. Um, it doesn't matter. Really, the important thing is that you get the correct flow rate. So one of the gauges will tell you the overall pressure and the other one will be the flow rate or the pressure that you're running at. And note that if you did pick up a CO2 tank, you will need this adapter. And most regulators, if you get a CO2 slash argon adapter, uh, lots of them come with it. And if not, well, check the link. I'll uh, have a description for one of these that you can pick up on the side. If you do get a mixed gas tank, then it will have a slightly larger valve. It's a 580. It's actually easier because you don't need that adapter like with the CO2. One little piece of advice, when you are done welding, actually turn the valve off. Um, it really, it only takes one little leaky fitting or valve to empty an entire tank. And if you had a full bottle, well, that's enough to make a grown man cry. You've got the wire fed through, the polarity is correct. Make sure your flow rate on the gas is between 15 and 20, and you're ready to start throwing down some beads. The technique and some MIG tips and tricks will be coming in a later video. If I've already posted it, well, click on the video at the end, and if not, stay tuned. That's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.